All right, hello and welcome. Welcome to the Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. We're doing this live and I'm super self-conscious because there's like four, three to four people listening to me on the other end of the line, <laughs> whom you can't hear yet, but you will soon. Um, yeah, so just a couple of quick things. Um, God, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, my official birthday stream. My birthday is actually tomorrow, uh, but I didn't want to interrupt drafting week. So yeah, birthday stream today. Uh, we're going to run for about three hours and then uh, we're going to flip it over to John Derek Murphy's birthday stream, my friend. And uh, yeah, um, other than that, we're going to do uh, drafting week this week. So I'm going to be streaming every day. Uh, if you head to my Twitter or the Discord channel, you can vote on what times are best for that. I'm thinking 12 to 3 p.m. is the best right now. So, uh, yeah, keep your eyes out for that stuff. Um, other than that, I think we're just going to head into it. So, let's, uh, let's make that a little quieter. Who wants to introduce themselves? Yay! I will introduce myself. I'm the one and only MC Pepper Pockets. Who's next? <laughs> Somebody go. Hi, I'm Valerie. Hi, I'm Drawny. Right. So wow. these are the awesome people that uh, that I've brought along to have jokes and shenanigans with. Um, so yeah, we're going to be playing Microscope today. Uh, a live role-playing game whom none of us has played and only one of us has read all the rules. So it's going to be fun. <laughs> the rudest way to play. <laughs> also known as the best way to play. Yes. The only way. If you can't play the best way, mm -hmm. you have to play the worst way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a good time, guys. I, I have good feeling about this. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, do you want to start, Sam? Yeah, so Microscope is a sort of, well, they specifically want you to know it's not a collaborative game because each player has a lot of individual agency, but it's a game about creating your own history, whether it be a whole new world that's totally disconnected from our own or some subset of our own history. Uh, it's about creating periods that are like, large swathes of time, uh, you know, 500 to 1,000 to maybe more than that kind of time period. And then below that, you have events uh, that are, you know, 50 to 100 years-ish, it feels like, time periods. But these are really flexible. And then below that, you have um, scenes where it's a specific moment in time. Like, uh, you know, this is John F. Kennedy, Kennedy on the phone with whoever the Soviet Union premier was at the time. Uh, and you know you're you're negotiating some nuclear missile missile launch, um, so it's about filling in that history. Uh, in you don't have to move linearly, you know, just because we already know what happens a thousand years from now doesn't mean that there isn't room to slot something in between, you know, the Roman Empire and the Holy Roman Empire. There's a lot of time inside there, um, and basically we're each going to go uh, around in a circle. Uh, one at a time and during each of these cycles where we will each have essentially a, a single action uh one of us will be the lens as you can see here dangs is currently the lens uh and the lens goes first and the lens goes last so the lens gets to go not just twice as often as everyone else but uh each player normally would only get to um create either a period an event or a scene, but the lens can create any can create two of those things per turn, um, as long as they're nested. So you can create a period and then a scene within that period, if you want, as the lens. And then once everyone is gone and the lens has gone twice, uh, then you the lens moves to the person to the left of the current lens. Which in our case, I don't know. I guess I'll go by the by our little windows in the bottom here. Um, 
and then you start again. Um, and so to start the game, uh, let's see here. Let me just scroll. What we need to play? We don't. Well, we got all that. Um, step so first, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Brendan. Step one. Big picture. Yeah, the big picture. Um, so we we want to brainstorm sort of our overview of the history we want, or at least you know some rough sketch of where we want to start. Um, so the examples in the book are an, an ancient empire rises and falls, or cavemen at the dawn of time found the first civilization, or mankind leaves the sick earth behind and spreads out to the stars. So there's a pretty broad swathe of things that you can do here. Um, and I guess uh, that's kind of where we should start. Uh, that's what we should create. And I totally don't have a spot for that to write uh, in, but I'm going to create that. Right. Uh, so is, is everyone kind of clear on what's going on so far? Uh, <laughs> mostly, I think. <laughs> so just to, just to reiterate or maybe give a little more clarification, the idea of microscope is we're basically designing a timeline. Uh, and on that timeline, we're going to have uh, various levels of interaction with the timeline and the, the events that are happening. And we're all going to collab like it's not a collaboration game. It's specifically not a collaboration game, but we're all going to kind of work on this timeline and, and design this world through through role playing, through storytelling, through all of whatever we want to do. Um, and yeah. So we start with kind of the, the, the broad and we move down into the more specific as we go. Um, Is there a goal of the game? Uh, it's not so much a winning or losing game so much as it is just a game where uh, a game that you have fun by creating a cool thing. Um, yeah, there's no real winners or losers or anything like that. Um, so yeah. This is not a game for Donald Trump. There are no losers. He cannot hate anyone here. <laughs> Harsh but fair. Um, so yeah, uh, does anyone uh, want to say something about a potential big picture for us? I know Sam's got stuff planned, but uh, anyone else got anything? Yes, no, maybe so. <laughs> I would call that a no. <laughs> Based on the uncomfortable silence. Uh, would, does anyone have a favorite period of like real history that we could draw stuff from? Uh, Are you? I do dig the Roman Empire, uh, but then again, I dig a lot of history. So. Uh, okay. Yeah, I've been hanging out a lot in the Roman Empire lately in the games I've been playing. Uh, so I'm cool to do that, but maybe something else would be also good. Um, I've also been watching a lot of Penny Dreadful lately, so I'm really into Victorian England right now. <laughs> That's where my mind's in right now, so hey. All, all bodices and coal. Oh, yes. Yep, <laughs> pretty much all it was. And fainting couches. Yeah. All right. I'm cool with Victorian England. Um... Okay, so let's just to be... Well, okay, yeah. So we're talking um, like our history or are we talking another world? An alternate Victorian uh, England, Europe, whatever. Ooh, intriguing. That could be fun. What about... Uh... Hold on. I'm going to write something in the <laughs> thing. If I can figure out how this text box thing will work. like cogs turning is that a thing <laughs> yep well, i'm actively turning cogs right now whoa my text box is moving oh my god Ooh, yeah there it is <laughs> oh there it goes 
So yeah, here's what I wrote. Whoa, someone's fixing it. Uh, on a world colonized long ago, civilization has fallen, but it, or civilization had fallen, but it has managed to claw its way back up to a Victorian level. I'm cool with that. We cool with that? Yeah. Yeah. Dystopian, I like it. Um, oh yeah, okay, so that's actually something I totally didn't mention before, and that doesn't in fact apply to the big picture, but under pretty much every other level of the game, uh, you are generally going to assign a light or dark tone to that. So, it's funny, I was feeling like this was totally a positive thing, like, should have fallen apart, and they finally rebuilt it. But yeah, you could totally cast this as dystopian. So you, you can swing either way for almost anything. But it's you designate that when you create it, um, and then you have to kind of respect that. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. So uh, next up, bookend history. So the general idea of our timeline is that it's going to be divided into what we call periods. Um, we're going to set right now collaboratively. We're going to do the first and last period, and give them a tone. So yeah, um, so are we, we're starting with them having gotten Victorian era technology? Yeah, so I could totally be super pedantic here and talk about like where you want to designate that, but I'm totally going to say like coal power and like, you know, transition from cottage industry to factory kind of centralized industry. Uh, and that's that's the socio-economic state that we find ourselves in. Except I don't know how that translates to a period. Um, let me think. Uh, I guess other than, well, I would say kind of like the the old ways are being thrown by the wayside. Yeah, I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. Or people are, are, are moving from the country to the city uh, and, and the, all, the governments of the world are trying to figure out how to cope with it. I don't know if that's, I feel like it's a dark period. Like there's a fog over London. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay. So, Uh, you said dark, eh? Yes. I pulled the wrong thing. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I think if you zoom in, you can just click on the circle and fill it. Oh, can I? Okay. It's weird. It's this. This is pretty good, actually, about grouping things at zoom levels, so you can create like usable objects. What you want me to do? It. I got it. I got it. We're good. Okay, uh, and then just do another quick text box stating that it's the start. Oh, there we go. Cool. So that's the start okay. of our history. Go ahead, Zen. I was going to say, how, how long a period do we want this to cover? Because it should be more than up to today, I would feel like, more than a 200-ish year period. Yeah. That sounds reasonable to me. I shouldn't create both the start and the end, should I? No, <laughs> definitely not. Um, so the end, um, I think it should end the way it starts. Um, I think 
that everyone should be leaving the city for the country. Um, or what about wor- leaving the world for the stars? <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Okay, I'm cool with that. That sounds good. Uh, but yeah, leaving... Kind of like if we're starting with everyone coming, then we should finish with anyone, everyone leaving. That's usually how it goes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a light tone. Uh, like hopeful. You know, everyone's excited about their new start. Yeah. Oops. Uh oh. <laughs> well, that that didn't work. Yeah, you gotta make sure. Oh, you fucked it up. No, I got it. It's fine. Uh oh. We're good. Oh, did we? Weren't we supposed to create a palette at some point? Oh, that's next. Okay, never mind. Ooh, all right. So I'm going to put it uh, here for now, just like on the side here. Um, everyone is leaving for the stars. Cool. And that will- Are we- are we talking about humans here? Yes. I thought we were. Are we? Are we? Yeah. We don't have to be. <laughs> Since we're in a parallel world, I don't know. I say they're sentient lobsters. You would. <laughs> you would. I say they're sexy llamas. I like that better. Can, can they both be it. sentient lobsters and sexy llamas? Like, can they just well, be part of, like, anthropomorphic animals? Or, yeah, both. Llamas with claws. I hate this creature already. <laughs> and I helped create it. <laughs> I hope they move off our planet. <laughs> no, okay. I, I say they shouldn't be people. Humans. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with the humans. Uh, I'll say humans, but uh, we'll discuss it during the palette stage. <laughs> that could be robots. We don't know that. Fair. Or pets that are somehow weirdly uh, combined. Okay. Oh, like a fish with a man's face. Yeah. We call him <laughs> Fish Man. Can they be humans, fish. but but just with lobster claws? <laughs> 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 How did that happen? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. They got this really weird custom iPad for it. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's got to be made custom and special. It, you and know, lobster you, people. Yeah, if you were living in like a Victorian era, it'd be really hard to like put on a corset if you had lobster claws. <laughs> well, that's more, obviously the lobster people are not, you know, like on the same level as people people. They're the oh, servants. Okay. Right, so they don't get corsets. Got it. No. Okay, okay. They can stay in the colonies. <laughs> they can they can stay in the country. Look, let's not go, maybe... get all Belgian Congo on these guys. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. So, um... So, for the palette, the palette is going to be, um... Basically, what we want to include and what we don't want to include. Uh, And every player uh, is going to get a chance to say uh, at least one yes or no. We're going to go around in a circle. Um, You can add uh, one yes or no on your turn. Uh, We keep going around until uh, somebody opts out. Uh, Yeah. I think you have to opt out twice. Yes, you're correct. Opt out twice. So, um, who wants to go first? 
Nobody? Someone who actually knows who, how this happens. How this yeah, is. I'd say one of you guys, because I, okay. I need a, uh, I say, an example. Okay, I say what we definitely need. Actually, I don't know if this is right, but what I wanted to say is political intrigue. I don't know if that's a thing we can put on the palette, but it feels like it should be. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's fine. A um, what? What's going on there, then? Yeah. I'm right. Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, so I'll go next, I guess, and say that I do not want steampunk oh, in what the game. The... Ooh, okay, okay. Ruined instantly. <laughs> it's over. I'm leaving, guys. Bye. I'm, I'm done. I'd drop my mic if it weren't sitting on my desk. <laughs> Birthday stream over. <laughs> uh, so the rules talk a lot about. Um, like this section is not very long, but they talk a lot about, you know, ways in which to uh, kind of change things up, you know, ban things that are expected or perhaps unexpected and uh, keep things that are unexpected sort of thing. So that's what I'm doing. That's fair. Yeah. I actually don't mind that. Yeah. All right. Cool. So uh, Val or Johnny, one of you needs to... Give you a yes or a no. Or you can opt out, but, you know. Hmm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Do we have just, like, all the options in the world? Yeah, yes, basically. Um, yeah, but see, that's what's difficult, is that yeah. we have everything open to us. Ha, huh. all right. That's I, though. Uh, now we are working with, like, a future kind of alternate universe, right? Yeah. Uh... Can I... Go ahead. Sorry. So then, can I say yes to alien life forms? Yes. yes. Yep. No problem. Alright, let's do that. Yep. Uh, keep in mind that anything that's going on this list isn't necessarily introduced into the timeline until we actually introduce it in the timeline. Ooh, got it, okay. So it's not like necessarily that at the beginning alien life forms exist, but we can introduce them later uh, and have it be a thing. Um, so, you know, there you go. Sweet. Okay, so I think because this is a, um, a certain limited timeline, I would say no to time travel. Okay, sure. Sounds good. I think that's a really good one, and that's actually specifically called out in the rules, because that kind of wrecks the game. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor Who can eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, honestly, that's all I was thinking about when, when it's about time and time stuff. It's timey-wimey Doctor Who. Yeah. None of that here. All right. Sounds good. You got another one, Sam? Uh, can I pass just for the moment? Yep. Yeah, you I can will have another one. I'm not opting out. I'm just saying I don't have one at this exact moment. Okay, sure. Uh, I am going to say that I want uh, space trains. Oh, my God. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't even know I wanted that. Same here, but now I'm I I, I want it. I'm into it. I'm in Victorian era, right? Mm hmm Space trains. So basically they would be building space trains to travel to the stars in the end? Yep. Yes, because because there is ancient infrastructure left over from the previously advanced civilization. Uh, and it's like uh, space elevators and a ring around the planet and shit. 
Okay, okay. It drains the space. <laughs> Bo boil that down. I put it, it's already on the thing. Ancient cool. infrastructure. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's too late, it's already on the list. No, 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 that's, that's perfect, that's perfect. It's just uh, save the details for the gameplay. Um, so yeah, Johnny or Val, if one of you wants to opt out or suggest something else. I kind of thought about... I might about... have to opt out. Nothing's coming to mind. Okay. Johnny, go ahead. I kind of thought about adding special abilities under special circumstances, but I'm not sure how specific I should be with that. I mean, you don't have to be super specific at all. We could just put special abilities under special circumstances. Okay. And that's a yes. We, we want that? I believe so. I would like to. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, so do you want to do something? So it's up to me and you again, Sam? Uh, okay. I want no faster than light travel. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. I know how much you hate FTL. Terrible scourge. <laughs> um, I want no monarchy. Ooh. Nice. So specific. <laughs> Brexiting from space. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Brexit in space! Everything must be made relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Alright. So, if you opt out again, Val, we're done. If not, we continue. Alright. Um, can we say special abilities but no magic? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Alright. Alright. You got something, Ronnie? Do I have to? No, you can opt out. <laughs> I have one yes and one no. Why okay. Now? So you can say one. <sighs> hey. Kind of, kind of the only things I wish to have in life. <laughs> it's just special abilities and fun travel, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Um. I. I don't have any idea right now. Okay. You're going to opt out then? I guess so, yeah. Okay. Sure, no problem. You got one more, Sam? Um, I don't have one right at the moment, no. Okay. Um, I had one, but I forgot it. <laughs> uh, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Oh, uh, no nuclear energy. Okay, so all matter flies apart and there's nothing but helium atoms? I meant more like no nuclear reactors or uh, nuclear bombs. Well, don't you think that's kind of inevitable? If this is a no magic universe? I mean, maybe. What do you think? I mean, if we're reaching a point where humans leave the planet, you kind of have to have that. You can't have not discovered it. I suppose. And, and I did yeah. And I did also say no steampunk, so that kind of leaves me in a weird... Yeah, yeah. no nuclear energy, but no steampunk. You're not allowed to use coal. Everyone's just burning wood forever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Electricity... <laughs> It could How be do you generate that? Damn power? Uh, yeah, you're right. It's hydroelectric world. Okay, <laughs> actually, shit. How about that? The planet has... And I'm just going to bypass your ridiculous proposition. Uh, <laughs> sure. Has, um, the planet has... I could spell... Enormous... Uh, um, waterfalls. Unnaturally huge waterfalls. Ooh. Okay. 
So cool. there is a, pre a preponderance of um, hydroelectric generation. Nice. Okay. So, so we're going to have hydroelectric space trains. I love it. Oh, damn. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> I'm so excited, you guys. Yep. That seems to be the way it's going. I'm down with that. All right. So, um, Valadrani, you get one. Uh, I have an idea. Okay, go I, ahead. I, I kind of want to... Um, add to that whole water thing and think about that there are more fluids in this world that people can actually live off of. Oh. <laughs> okay. That sounds interesting. It's not only water, but also like other colored uh, fluids or something that people can live off of. <laughs> uh, so how would we describe that? Um, oh, the on other uh, liquid chemicals. Yeah. Yeah. Which I assume would be methane or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, there'd be others. Yeah. Maybe this planet is Titan with hydrocarbon lakes of ethane and methane. <laughs> why why is everything a reference to somebody's story? I I I don't know. It's just the way that it goes. First Sam with I his lobster it. people and now you with your hydrocarbon lakes. <laughs> everything just boils down to hydrocarbon lakes. Yeah. This is all what was that book James Hogan with the the Coda Life Makers? Where the robots crash on Titan and they like evolve into a robot medieval empire. Oh man, I've never heard of that, but that sounds fantastic. He's got this whole bit at the beginning where he's like, well, yeah, so each of them only gets half the code for making a new one because there's not enough memory left because they're damaged. And so they got to pair off and <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like, oh, I see what you're doing here. Yeah, that's fantastic. All right. I'm definitely going to going to look into that. <laughs> It's too bad he went insane later in life and did not believe that the planets are as far apart as they actually are. Oh, that is a shame. <laughs> Lightning formed the Grand Canyon. Come on, it's possible. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so uh, do we have another palette proposition? Uh, it's up to you, Drawing. Uh, no, that was Drawings, right? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> if you have one Val, otherwise we're going to flip over again. Um, I mean, this seems like a pretty good list already. Me. Okay, cool. Uh, so you're going to opt out then? I believe I am. All right. Um, anything else, Sam? No, I'm out. Yeah, I don't got much else either. I wanted to think of something cool with top hats, but I couldn't. Cool. No <laughs> steampunk. That doesn't mean they can't have top hats. No, only bowlers. <laughs> 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 pork, pork pies and bowlers, so, and that's it. Maybe add that. No top hats, only right. bowlers. Fine. <laughs> Done. All right. So I th that's probably about it, unless you have anything else, Ronnie. We'll uh, we'll go to the next uh, phase. I just had one very crazy idea because one particular person has a very interesting photo. <laughs> I don't know who that would be. I, wa I but, wonder. Hmm. <laughs> no, but it was just weird artist's mind. Um, I, I just have a question. Can people from chat also add something? Uh, yeah, if, I, I'm cool with that if we're all cool. Um, yeah, okay. Not a problem. I don't Sounds know like if, if anyone is... Uh, if anyone wants to, but yeah, it would be cool to engage chat as well. Ever the I mean, streamer, Drani, ever the streamer. <laughs> hey, you are on Twitch. That's true. That means you, Rogue Horse 96, we're looking at you right now. Uh, <laughs> Samantha is here somewhere as well. Deep dark. <laughs> um, I just wanted to call out a rando. 
for no reason. That's man. You shouldn't call out lurkers, man. It's bad form. So I've been so I've been told. So I've been told. Yeah. I'm just gonna open the viewer list and start calling them out, just one after another. <laughs> Until someone comes up with something. Um, Bueller. 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 Nice. Um, so yeah. So <laughs> next we go to the first pass. Um, uh, so basically, all group decisions are over. It's now only individual decisions. Oh, snap. So there does not have to be a consensus from here on out. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anarchy. Um, so yeah. Basically what we're going to do now is we're going to create either a period or an event each. Just to give us something to work with as we move forward in the game. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much the gist. Uh, all events have to go inside a period. Um, actually, this would be a really good time, Sam, to kind of give us a little bit of detail about the, uh, the differences between period events and scenes. Okay, well, that's, it's pretty simple. Um, I mean, not only is it a difference in time scale, because uh, events are things that take place over months or years or decades, theoretically, um, whereas a scene is real time. It's happening now. We are there. Each of us will play the part of a specific character. Um, so we're all in a room, or at least in direct communication with one another in a scene. Uh, and that could be you know, gen a general on the battlefield, Napoleon, ordering his troops uh, to march into Moscow and fucking it up, or it could be, uh, you know, uh, President of the United States on the phone with the Premier of the Soviet Union. Um, but, or it could even just be people in a village that are nearby the action discussing the the hearsay news of the broader world. But, scene is very specific and. Um, an event is, is the bigger picture in in which the scenes take place. Yeah. So periods are really big. They encompass long periods of like long, long times. They're big, big world changes almost. Uh, though they don't have to be, you can slot them in kind of wherever. Uh, events are, are smaller, uh, kind of a specific thing like a war or certain, uh, an election or different things like you know, it's smaller scale, and then scenes, yeah, even smaller. Um, so yeah, we're uh, all going to make a period or an event. There are no scenes in this first one. There, we're going to get into that later. Um, but yeah, so we all get to make either a period or an event. So who wants to go first? Maybe, maybe volunteers? No? I'll go, right. I'll go. Okay, cool. Uh, so I want to make an event underneath the very first, the start scene. Okay. Uh, and I want it to be um, the the invention of the steam engine. Let's call it that. That should be the start of all of this anyway. <laughs> okay. Just to call it straight out. And this is what motivates people now that you can build factories and have local power and not just a horse dragging a thing. Uh, and, and this is what's pulling people into the city. Okay. Um, is that event I, light or dark? I want it to be dark. Okay. I want it to be the abandonment of our pastoral history and everything is just black clouds of soot. All right. Oh, snap. That's deep. So, you want to select this. Oh, no. What have I done? You goofed. Apparently, there's stuff here. Oh, it's all grouped together. What have you done? <laughs> I, I don't know. It... I got it. I got it. We're good. I fixed it, okay? So, yeah. 
Oh god. Do you want me to type it in? Yes, please. I don't okay. know. My computer is being weird. I went up to Arial 200 font somehow. Yeah, that's, oh, that's a problem. <laughs> Quite the problem. That's, that's a problem. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, who wants to go next? I can go next. Okay, you can make a period um, or an event. Uh, I like, uh, I'm gonna make an event. Um, I like the idea of an election, like a very significant election okay. as a light event. Okay. Do I have to say where? <laughs> uh, you should try and give us clear details. Okay, um, let's go for around the midpoint of our timeline. Oh yeah. Uh... Oh, oh, sorry. Um, you have to create an event underneath a period. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So I guess we need more periods then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and keep in mind that uh, anything that we create uh, at least until we get to scenes, uh, should have a clear resolution. Uh, no open-ended questions. Okay. Um, how how broad can periods be again? They can be confused. pretty broad. Okay. Uh, like like Sam was saying, like theoretically, the Roman Empire can be a period. Or like. Right the classical Greek era or, you know, the second world war could be a period. Mm -hmm. The second world war could also be an event within a period. Like it just, it depends right. on what you're dealing with. Right. So if I just say a wartime period, that's not specific enough, right? No, it is not. All uh, right. Okay. Well, what if it was, you know, you could have like a, a period of a specific kind of wars that happened, like more than one of them. Yep. Like religious right. wars or nationalist wars or whatever. I'm not supposed to help you. Oh, my God. It's, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm a little lost in space here. So <laughs> the help is appreciated. As maybe our, our, our characters or whoever we're sending in space will eventually be lost in space. So there we go. It's all fitting. Danger Will Robinson. <laughs> my arms right now. Yeah. What what happens to the stuff in a pellet? Uh, you can you can use that to create things. Um, okay. But it doesn't have to be used right away. Okay. That uh, that helps. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In terms of a period, can we have a space race? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's perfect. Sweet. Space uh, race period. Light or dark? Um, let's, let's go with light. Okay. Since, uh, give it a little sense of hope in there, you know, oh. some national excitement. Sure. We choose to go to space and go up the elevator and do the other things <laughs> this decade, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Bravo. Bravo. You've been practicing that a lot, Sam. I love that speech. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> the way he pronounces things is out of this world. Oh, he's great. That's great. Uh, space race between whom? Uh, between, well, I mean, are, are we going with countries or? That's, Could be. That's up to you. Let's see. Huh, let's see. Let me, let me look at this palette here. Um... Huh. Hmm. Well, I guess I guess if we go for between like countries that could play into the political intrigue, maybe. Absolutely. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. 
Uh, Let's go for for a nationalistic space race. Perfect. The traditional space race. All good. Nationalistic space race it is. There you Woot. go. Okay, so uh, you can go, Johnny, or I will go. Well, in terms of people being able to make space race, mm. we would have to have some sort of vehicles that would have to be built or invented, I guess. Yep. So, um, I think that that could also, since people are or have invented steam engine, that could also be an event. Uh, s since we want them to be kind of, uh, what was it? Hybrid engine stuff? Uh, hydroelectric, actually. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> They just build a big boat and they go straight up the waterfalls. <laughs> yeah. So, what event are you trying to create? Uh, something like uh, founding of the first space vehicle. Sure. Sure. Will that be under the Nationalist uh, Space Race? Hmm. The thing is that there's probably not a period for that. Because in order to have a space race, you would probably have to have more than one. <laughs> not necessarily. One vehicle, I mean. Well, the first vehicle could be the, the spark of their space race. Okay, so we can put it in there. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, with the, the, the space race that we know to the moon, there wasn't an actual working... There really wasn't that much shuttle stuff going on at the time. Like, it kind of came out of it, right? Well, I mean, the, the whole Sputnik thing was what started it, right? Is right. That, if, they can put a, if they can put a sphere with some tails on it into space above the United States, they could put a missile there. And so the U.S. said, well, we should do that, too. I mean, Sputnik was the, the shell of a nuclear bomb hollowed out with a radio jammed inside of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And interestingly enough, on a side note, uh, Sputnik going up actually uh, invented is, is the thing that caused uh, them to invent GPS through, uh, through triangulation. Huh. It was crafty Russians. It wasn't Russians, it was actually Americans, but yeah. Well, the Russians had their own, they have Glasnost. Oh, right. Fair enough. But yeah, uh, basically this professor, and this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell the story because I think it's relevant to kind of what we're doing, just to give you context. Uh, this professor uh, heard Sputnik, like you could hear Sputnik's beeps, right? And so you, by detecting those beeps, you could uh, figure out, because you know how far it is from, from the Earth. So using the beeps and the distance of the beeps, you can actually figure out, you know, based on a known distance, how far away it is. Uh, and then they use that technology in order to make GPS. Um, and also, is also one of the ways in which radar was developed. Uh, through the early days. So yeah, there's a lot of crazy things. So Drani, did you want that to be a light or a dark event? Light. Light, okay. So, 
What the hell? Sam, why can't I edit this? <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like <laughs> Racist against blocks of text. You're doing it right now. I can see you doing no, it. No, I'm over top of it. Are you? You're. Oh, you have to select the cursor to select things. You can't select text boxes with the text. Oh. Tool. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. You want to, but you can't. <laughs> So weird watching you do it seven seconds ago and simultaneously. Yeah. Do you have the stream open? Yeah. Okay. So there you go. There's an event. Uh, what do I want to create? Um, I am going to create a... Uh, Worldwide energy scare period. Ooh, okay. Hmm. Madly dark. <laughs> Paste. Uh, oh, so much better. I got it this time. <laughs> Worldwide energy crisis. Cool. I'll put that right here. Keep in mind that there is totally room to fit things in between any period or event. History is um, history uh, has space for everything, <laughs> as it were. So, uh. On to the next step, Sam. So the next step is basically we actually start playing. Um, so this is where we're going to start going uh, like in, a, in an order. Um, but first, uh, we need to decide who's going to be the lens. And the lens is the person who decides the focus of this particular round. Um, uh, and so, the, so what that means is you have to decide what area of time or what periods or events we're exploring specifically and we all have to kind of stick within that yeah uh and correlates around a certain certain topic basically right yeah um and then and then the turn essentially proceeds uh by the lens first creating either a period an event or a scene uh, and they can like i said before they can do two that are nested if they want to do that and then once they've done that uh, control passes to the next player who can create a period of enter scene, and then the next player, the next player, until the end, until everyone's gone, and then the lens gets one more go, and then the the lens passes to the next player. So, so got it. yeah, we we get on we get on that. Any explanations needed? I think I understand what we're going for. Okay, cool. You good, Ronnie? Uh, I think uh, when someone else starts, I will probably see how it goes, how, sure. it, how it's supposed to be. I nominate Brendan as the first lens. I second that nomination. Okay. Yep. I, I accept. <laughs> I accept. <laughs> okay, good. We're all in agreement. <laughs> I feel like I've been voted class president. <laughs> Most likely to proceed. <laughs> hey, no. Okay, so I'm gonna write this down. And then what order do you wanna do it, Sam? What do you mean? Oh, I see. Um, I think we should go according to our little windows. Okay. So you uh, draw an eval me. Okay, that way, gotcha. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go first, and I am going to create. Um, so I'm gonna choose the focus, 
And I want the focus to be space trains. <laughs> cool. I'll clear on that. <laughs> yes. So, uh, in order to do that, uh, I'm going to create an event and a scene within that event. Uh, so I'm going to create the first space train is invented um, as being different from the first space vehicle. And I'm going to create the moment Dr. Zeitgeist discovers that space trains are the optimal vehicle are the optimal vehicle to travel the stars with. <laughs> All right, Dr. Zeitgeist. <laughs> Is that supposed to be German? No. <laughs> no Germans ever said that. Mm -hmm. That's not a real word, word at all. What are you talking about? This is like <laughs> Professor White. He's, he's you know, a robot man, not a white man. <clears throat> you got to work on that German pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, can you do the... Is that a period? No. Uh, an event in a scene. Okay, where do you want to, what do you want to put those under? Uh, after the first space vehicle is invented, the first space train is invented. Oh, okay. And, and uh, what's the tone for your event? Uh, my event is going to be light. No, sorry, my event is going to be dark and my scene is going to be light. Okay. So, um, in the effort of kind of teaching the game, uh, I am going to make this a regular scene. So I'm going to ask a question and we're going to attempt to answer that question by playing characters in the scene. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my question for this scene is why are space trains better than any other vehicle type to explore the stars. Well, they run on the on the pre-existing rails of the space elevator. Right? So they're very efficient. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh so we're going to set the stage. Um we're going to be in Dr. Zeitgeist's laboratory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, chuckle away. I, I will. I will always laugh when you say that. Okay, just, just move on. Um. So I'm gonna play Zeitgeist. Uh, going around the table to the right. Uh, you get to pick a character. So Jirani, pick a character. You can make them up. Like you can play whoever you want. Uh, but these are gonna be important people in kind of the the grand scheme of our history. So. Or oh, I guess God. they don't have to be, but... So much pressure! Pressure! <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Uh. Do I have to be able to fulfill that rule? That role? Uh, well, you're picking the person you're playing. Um, oh, God. Well, you can also um, play as sort of a Greek chorus type character uh, that they usually in this game refer to as time. So you're some person or collection of people uh, who are trying to put pressure on the scene to end. So maybe you're Congress trying to push through a bill. And so there's only 12 hours until they have to do that or something. Hmm. Kind of thought about being crazy scientist that is working on the project. Sure. 
Sounds good. What's your name? Well, since we're going German here, <laughs> I'm gonna be. <laughs> mm. Horst. Horst. No, Horst. H O R S T. Horst. <laughs> That's like the ugliest German name there is. <laughs> I love it. All I right. Love it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, who are you going to play, Sam? I am Gen uh, Major General Von Metternich. <laughs> uh, or whatever the German equivalent of that rank is, um, who <laughs> is deeply opposed to the development of this, the space trains because it will take resources away from the military. Okay. Val, who do you want to play? Um, can I be Dr. Zeitgeist's assistant? Yeah, no problem. What's your name? Uh, Luna. Let's just go with Luna. Okay, last nameless Luna. All right. Yes, Luna only has one name. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> like a star. <laughs> yeah. She used to be a pop star before she became a scientist's <laughs> assistant. <laughs> just kind of stuck with her. Okay. Slipping through. Um, so just before we start, we have the question. Uh, set the stage. We're going to uh, be in Zeitgeist's lab. Uh, we've, we've kind of established who our characters are. Uh, and last thing is reveal thoughts. So we state one thing that our character is thinking about the un upcoming scene. Uh, so we start to the right of the player making the scene. So we start with you, Drani. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, um, well, my scientist is obviously really trying to make this work too. Uh, To become famous, I guess. Okay, makes sense. To you, Sam? Uh, well, I kind of already said, I think, what my character wants, which is to, you know, shut this down, this, this mad science. Okay, sounds good. Assistant Luna. Uh... <laughs> this is a tough one, guys. Um... Uh, man, so many things that I could be thinking. So many thoughts. Um, When's lunch? Yes. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm thinking that <laughs> I just really am excited to get to space. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so, uh, Zeitgeist is thinking that he really wants, he really wants to discover, uh, what the alien race left us, but he's been forced to work on this stupid space travel project. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, aliens, space travel project. So, uh, when the scene starts, uh, Zeitgeist is going to be there with Luna. Uh, and we're going to have the Major General and Dr. Horst to uh, <laughs> enter the scene later. Um, so, yeah. Um... God, I'm always I'm always weird when it comes to role playing. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you want to start? Yeah. Or I? Well, I'm starting because you're not in the scene yet. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I could come bursting through the door. You don't know. <laughs> you just slap him. 
this Kool Aid Man bust through the wall. Uh, so Zeitgeist turns to Luna and asks, "When's lunch?" <laughs> And Luna says, "No, we're so close. We have to, we have to keep working on this. Lunch can wait." Can it though? I mean, I, l- listen. If you're really hungry, we can just like go and grab some quick sandwiches and eat them at our desks. I mean, come on, we gotta, we gotta keep working on the space train thing. Like we're getting somewhere here. The phone rings on your desk. It's like a rotary phone. Ring, 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 ring. Hello. <laughs> this is uh, General von Metternich. What are you doing over there? Your uh, project ready yet? I, I mean, we're we're getting there. We're we're nearly there. Uh, okay, uh, this is an unscheduled uh, inspection. I'm going to arrive in five minutes. You better be ready. Uh, well, damn. Well, I guess we're going to have to wait until later for that lunch. Uh, no kidding. Uh, can you uh, can you go to the back room and take everything that's on my desk and Put it in a closet. <laughs> okay, you're the boss. Why can I ask? Uh, let's let's just say that this guy is a little loony, and uh, he doesn't like it when people talk about aliens. And oh. my my monthly ufologist magazines might go the wrong way. So. All right. Okay, you got it, Professor. <laughs> it's ufologist. Thank you. All right. <laughs> they're, they're UFOs. <laughs> UFOs. Um, so I go and I put things away on the desk. Okay. So it, it takes me a little bit because I'm looking at things. Right. I'm intrigued. Uh, I comb my hair. You show up. Major? I clean off my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> the major burst um, through the door. <laughs> <clears throat> I hope you're ready. This is both a safety and procedural inspection. Uh, well, so what's the general safety procedure for scientific research projects, General? Uh, we have to monitor how much power you're consuming so as not to endanger the civilian population uh, for brownouts, and we have to reserve a specific amount of power for military uh base that you are based on right uh does the fact that i'm only running two computers matter you're already using enough power on those two computers that could feed 20 men at arms uh for a month with all due respect sir i think that's a bit of an exaggeration unbelievable (laughs) who is this (laughs) I'm sorry. I'll keep my mouth shut. I'm I'm Luna. I'm an assistant. Don't mind me. Just, she she's know, got three PhDs. How many do you have, General? I have a G E N E R A L. How about that? <laughs> wow, that's very that's impressive. impressive. Very impressive. I bought that <laughs> title myself. Did did you now? Did did you? Good now? job. Look, Professor Zeitgeist. It, it just doesn't feel like. You're, you're in this for the good of the nation. You're, you're really just not respecting the spirit of the times. Really? Like, I have, I have this feeling that there's so many things we don't know about what's going on out there. And what, what about what's going on down here? The, <laughs> the, the Franks, Franco men are a constant threat. Well, and, and they're trying to get to space as well. We don't want to let them do that. Well, we wouldn't want them to let to make any discoveries before us. I, I get that. We want to we want to know about the aliens first. Oh, aliens! Unbelievable. <laughs> There's no aliens. What, aliens. Then who oh, built the there. the friggin' tracks in space? Look, nature works in mysterious ways. <laughs> I, I think what, what, what Dr. Zeitgeist is trying to say is that it's very important for us to, to see what's out there. You yeah, know, it's, exactly. Someday we might, we might need another planet. Maybe. All right, well, mark my words. If this enterprise is a failure, I will... Or if this enterprise is a success, I will resign. This is ludicrous. A total waste of resources. All right. I got me some motivation. 
<laughs> that sounds like a deal to me. So, uh, Dr. Horst wanders in. Oh, God. <laughs> you can do it, Johnny. Uh, oh, God. I want to be the dog just to know. <laughs> um... Horst leans to leans to Zeitgeist and says, "I think we have a problem." What 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 problem? Oh, you mean other than this guy? I I think we we might be running low on energy. Oh, that's that's not good. <laughs> energy? How do we say energy? <laughs> She's talking about energy. She's talking about energy <laughs> drinks. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, uh, nerds. I'll, I'll go get more at the store. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thanks, Luna. I appreciate that. That's what assistants are here for. I, that's what my three PhDs has led me to. Well, you know, you fulfill your purpose. I'll fulfill mine. <laughs> there you go. Um. <laughs> Benedict is now in a corner, uh, frantically dictating a, uh, a telegraph to one of his aides. He's surrounded by aides. It, okay. <laughs> okay. So I, I kind of quietly lean in and whisper, but but no, but like, what's really happening with the energy? Like, what's what's going on? Yeah. What's what's the problem with the energy, Horst? I didn't think that far. <laughs> <laughs> um. Wait. Let me think. Oh. oh God. Can I ask a question about this scene? Sure. It's out of character. How far? Along the development of the space train, are we? Uh, I would say that we're probably um, fairly advanced, but we need a significant discovery in order to make it work. And that discovery okay. is going to be why they're efficient. Got it. So... Uh, so yeah, Horst, uh, what's 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 wrong with the energy? Are the waterfalls running out? Like, I thought we were pretty much good to go. I think that we probably need an alternative to the water we already have. Oh yeah, uh, what 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 do you have in mind? I kind of heard some rumors that people. Uh, on another planet have uh, found some source of energy and uh, it's some kind of fluid that we should probably test out because it's supposed to be very powerful. Oh, okay. So like, what is it? Is it like Gatorade? Like, what are we, what are we talking? Hmm. It's kind of like a fuel, um, but I, I don't know about the specifics. It's, it, I, as I said, it's just a rumor, but it could be the solution to our problems. Okay, I'm I'm intrigued. Can you can you call them on the phone? Can can you get me some research? I need I need some some studies in order to to figure this stuff out. Uh, I see what I can do. All right, all right, cool. I mean, alternate energy sources, huh? Huh. Luna, look, like, uh, what did you say the uh, space rails were made of again? Uh, the space rails, they're made out of... Um... Rears and metal. <laughs> Plastic. <Sorry? laughs> no. Ignore him. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> they're, they're, they're made out of, out, of, out of some kind of space uh, iron that we've never seen on this planet, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> For the record, any space iron I'm calling steel. Uh, Perfect. You got it. So wait, I'll note that down. Good. Good. Thank you. Space iron is now steel. It's in our logbook. Good. The discoveries just keep on coming. Mm -hmm. um, so, have we determined whether or not this metal is conductive? I believe it is. Some re some of, most of our research shows that it is yes. Okay. So uh, we 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 haven't quite done enough research, but preliminary reports say that it is. 
Okay, that's that's good. That's good because this new fuel has got me thinking. Mm-hmm. If we could figure out some way to use electrical charge uh, in order to power these rails, like cause them to conduct, mm-hmm. we can use the fuel's energy to float the train down the rails. That's genius. I think that it just might work. Wait, you said no you said no magic, right? So I can't use magnets? No, <laughs> God damn it. You're banned from your own screen. <laughs> yes. We shall use magnets. Magnets? Yes, mm. yeah. Uh I saw this, I don't know. Here, General, come here. What, who, who summons, what do you want? I take the bars off his coat. Oh my God, who, why are you doing? <laughs> take a battery, like charge it, put a little metal ball on top, it floats. Like, oh my God. we what need to do start? this. We need to do this, but in a grand scale. We don't have time for this. I just received word there's a, uh, uh, Austerland attack on our uh, on one of the the bases of the sky pillars. Let's call it. Uh, they've they've damaged the shell. There's sparks flying out of it. Fires all over the city. Why are you wasting my time here? I have to leave. <laughs> if if this was all happening, why did why why did you even? It just happened. <laughs> Okay. Did you, not, did you not see my page come flying through the door with a with a, a, a pile of documents? Uh, no. Absent-minded professors, all of you. Maybe. We're scientists, man. Are you mumbling about it? It's over there. Okay. Uh, I think that's the scene. I think we're good. I think we've established <laughs> why why things have happened. So the answer is they run on space elevator rails using magnetism. Magnets. Yes. The um, the insane clown posse would be very happy about that. Yeah. Everyone heard that magnet song, right? Right. No. Oh, okay. No idea what that is at all. They 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 like. The Insane Clown Posse is this ridiculous band, and they released a song called uh, oh, Miracles, I think, and it's basically all about, like, science and it, how miraculous it is. And at one point, there's just a guy who goes, Magnets! How do they work? And it's great. To be fair, I am wearing my Juggalo face paint right now. Oh, well then, there you go. You know what I'm talking about. I think next time I have to pick a... An easier character. <laughs> <laughs> Just like it. the daughter or the dog or something. Someone <laughs> who doesn't know anything. I'm just going to play a golden retriever in every scene. <laughs> <laughs> the timeless retriever. Yeah. The or timeless. a llama, just for decoration. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, this nice. is a, the, that's what we should have specified that um, earlier in our palette. Llamas as decoration. <laughs> Just everywhere. That's that's how they roll in this world. <laughs> yeah, and one time they're gonna take over in the world. <laughs> <Yeah. Llamas. laughs> Alright. Uh so yeah, that's my turn. Uh we're gonna go to Drani next. Oh god. Uh you get to make history. Oh god, so much responsibility. <laughs> what's our what's our focus right now? I've forgotten. Uh, space trains. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're writing that down. Okay. Uh, Do you want some time to think about it, Ronnie? 
because uh, we're about an hour and a half in, so I was thinking of taking a five minute break. Uh, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just if it makes it easier, because we we, yeah. should, we should probably should take I, a break. That that would probably be nice. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. A break. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, let's uh let's do uh let's do a nine minute break. Come back at six thirty, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So yeah. Sweet. You cool? You cool with that, Johnny? Think about what you want to do. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go into break. Sweet. Yes.
All right, we're coming back. And there's now face cams. Yay. Oh, yeah, I should unmute you guys. There we go. <laughs> Sarah. Look, we're not going to re-woo for you, okay? It's all <laughs> good. We wooed once. Okay. So, go ahead, Ronnie. Hit us with your best shot. <sighs> um... I kind of thought about introducing the special abilities under special circumstances. Sure. So I want to make a period of time okay. or something <laughs> um, where people discover other planets that have that um, that have something that creates you having a special ability does that make sense makes perfect sense and i will even say it's related to the focus because it's using the space trains to travel Ooh, nice uh so yeah you want to make a period sure no problem uh okay. we're gonna make it here uh where do you want to make it actually well i guess it has to be after this <laughs> yeah probably uh oh. <laughs> Just grab chunks of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're good. There we go. Okay. I uh, I spent a little bit of time reading about. Uh, do you want it to be light or dark, Johnny? Before I forget. Hmm. Can I go help, help? <laughs> I go great. <laughs> no, I mean... Uh, this is the terrifying beige period. <laughs> the beige period. I mean, it's, it's kind of not, not only good abilities. Okay. Like, abilities that are uh, good for people, but people will also get greedy, so I guess it can turn out dark. Sure. Sounds good to me. <clears throat> so, let's, oh yeah, let's add a thing here. Um, uh, people discover special abilities on other planets. Cool. All right. So there's your event. Yay. Yay. <laughs> um, uh. Yeah. So then we go around to the left. Sam? Uh, okay. So I want to create a period, and I want it to be a, a light period, um, and it's going to be right after the very first one, uh, and it's... I want it to be like an age of discovery uh, where because uh, because there's like coal power and all that stuff and steam engines, uh, now people can get into the harder to reach places of this planet, the, the heart of darkness of their world, and they find the ruins of these ancient machines that were designed to go up and down uh, the elevator or the, the columns that they don't know what they are yet. And these could form or serve as a kind of blueprint to the future development of space trains. Cool. Sounds good. I will do that now. Oops. So yeah, I, I spend a little bit of time uh, researching like ways to play this. Uh, Roll20 is one of the more recommended ones. There's a few others. Um, there's not really a great way to play this digitally yet. It was originally designed to be done with like cue cards in a real space. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, 
This works okay. It's a little bit slower than I'd like, but it's not ridiculous. Um, but yeah, <laughs> just random discussion. <laughs> So yeah, I'm very much intrigued by the uh, the narrative aspects of this kind of game. Um, I just got uh, well for for those viewers and and people here that I've told. Uh, I got my Game Chef reviews back from the game I designed live on stream, uh, and it was pretty positively received. Um, got a lot of work left to do on it, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, some good feedback. Some good feedback. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Game design is hard. <laughs> it's difficult. Okay. So, uh, Val, to you. Do you want to create a period, an event, or a scene? To me, huh. Um, I'd like to create an event. Okay. Um... I guess during the worldwide energy crisis oh, towards yeah. the end, because we haven't really figured that out. Sure. Um, so I'd like an event where um, waterfalls are harnessed as a source of energy. Okay. I imagine that's the resolution of the worldwide energy crisis, right? Uh, probably. Hey, there you go. But, you know, history doesn't always work like that. Fair. That's true. So light or dark? Um... I mean, I think I think you're going light, but you know. yeah, probably. I, know, I was trying to find a way to make it dark, but I'm probably going. Light. <laughs> if it's a solution, it's probably light. Light. <laughs> Grim, dark, eco-friendly future. There we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, people harness. Power of the waterfalls. All right, cool. So it goes back to me, uh, and I'm going to create uh, two nested things again. Uh, but I'm going to create a period and an event. Uh, if you could do these for me, Sam, that'd be awesome because I need yep. to think. Um, I'm going to create a thing in between, a period in between the first period and the age of exploration. And, uh, this is going to be a, um, what do we got? Okay. Um, this is going to be a, as the people leave the cities, uh, a new age of tourism starts uh, with mm. with the countryside trying to attract people out out to like back out of the cities uh, and so they start a campaign uh, go to my event they start a campaign sorry light or dark uh, dark ah. <laughs> uh they start a campaign of pseudo archaeological digs in order to get people to see the wonders of the past out in the country. Can you explain that in English to me? Yes. Non native English speaker. <laughs> yeah, so the idea would be that um, with everyone moving from the country to the cities, the, the economy in the country is failing. Mm -hmm. uh, so in an effort to generate more visitors to see the countryside, to make them money again, they have to come up with some sort of advertising campaign, some sort of way of getting people out there. So they um, basically, they create this uh, campaign of like archaeological digs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, a lot of them are fake, but they're there. <laughs> okay. Um, 
so so yeah, people are, are all interested in archaeology again. Hey, Yveo, what's going on? I saw him too. So yeah, awesome. So that, that ends this round. Uh, so I believe we have to select legacies? Yes. Please explain what legacies are. This is actually the only part I really didn't understand. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Um, so legacies are the common threads that may stretch through time and influence history. A legacy can take many forms, an object, a person, a place, a bloodline, an organization, or even a philosophical ideal. Okay. You make legacies to identify things you think are interesting and want to keep in the spotlight. Legacies are explored during a special phase, uh, which is the phase we're in right now. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so the player to the right of the lens looks back over what has happened during this phase, or focus, and picks something to be a legacy. It has to be something that appeared in play this round, either from the... Uh, for the first time or reappearing from earlier in the game. Uh, but, and you can't make up something new. You have to single a particular thing out that we created. Uh, and that's going to essentially become a new palette element, kind of. But it's something that'll, that'll resonate through the rest of history. Right. So the player to my right, which whoever we decided is right or left. I think Drani is left and then Dal is right, I think. Weren't we just going in the order of names on the player order? Right, so who's to my right? Yeah, that was what I assumed. Right, because, no, but it should be... Okay, yeah, so it should be Sam should be the player to my right, and Drani will be the player to my left. Because uh, are you sure yeah. about that? Yes, because we're going to pass... We're going to pass the lens left. And we're gonna pass it this way to from me to Johnny to Val to you. That that looks like the right to me. Yes, but we've been playing it the opposite the entire time. So yeah, yeah. the way we've got the play order right now, that's that's what it looks like. So our play order goes uh, what we're saying right to left. Yeah. Okay. Okay. As long as that's as long as I understand. So sorry. Wait, who creates the legacy? Me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hold on. Let's look at what we've done here. I'm kind of hearing a sound that irritates me. I don't know. Yeah, I'm hearing a buzz, too. Like a chittering... Is that on my end? Is anyone trying to, like, contact a, a space... <laughs> an alien race here? With some kind of Morse code? <laughs> I don't think it's me. Is it me? Oh, let's see. I, I don't think it's me. I don't think it's me either. Is so, that thing? Actually, it could be me. Uh, I realized right this second that I'm not. Uh, I'm not actually listening to the audio that you're listening to. <laughs> yeah. See, there. It's it's definitely me. I'm sorry. I can't. I don't know if I can do anything about it. What is that? It's just feedback, or uh, I'm using the webcam. Uh, I'm using a different webcam for you guys with a different mic, so that it doesn't screw up my OBS. Well, it's gone now. Whatever you just did, I moved yeah. them apart, so maybe that helped. They were trying to talk to each other. Yeah. It's so silent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I want so just to to get back on topic here, I want this. Uh, phase's legacy to be the first space train. I think that should go down in history as being a pretty darn important event. Okay, so you have to create an event or dictated scene that relates to a legacy. Oh, there it is again. Um, I will create an event uh, that is... Um, the, the, the next country over, Ostland, it starts their own space program, thus kicking off, for real, the space race. Okay, sounds good.
do, do. Okay, uh, so just give everyone kind of a heads up. Uh, I think we'll do one more round and then we'll wrap it up. Because uh, it took us like an hour and a half to do that one, so. <laughs> Oops. Well, we'll see how it goes. If we have time to do more, we'll do more. But I want everyone to get the same amount of turns rather than... Um, and yeah, we'll, t we'll talk a little bit about the game at the end, if we have time. You know, what we thought, what we think we'd do better, uh, ideas we had about the storyline, stuff like that. If that's cool. Um, Works for me. Yeah. How long are you going to continue streaming? Uh, till 8, so another hour 15, give or take. Okay. That's the time I kind of told everyone, so... I know Derek's starting in 15 minutes, but that's fine. We'll uh, we'll overlap a little bit. It's all good. Okay, so that's 2 a.m. for me. Yeah. Oh, gee. <laughs> it's okay. Johnny actually, Johnny actually lives on Eastern Standard Time. Oh, yeah. I, I kind of do. <laughs> so then it works. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's move over there and everything's fine. <laughs> Here you go. Wouldn't even have any jet lag. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really wouldn't. Yep. Um, so yeah, uh, Drani, you are the next lens. So you decide the focus. Can someone just like simplify for me what this whole legacy thing was? Uh, so basically the idea is, is that there's something that affects the entirety of the history. Okay. Uh, and it's not super apparent right now, but on the next, after we finish the next phase, uh, someone needs to make another scene that explores the legacy. So they can explore either the one that we just created or the one that's created in the next round. So... Basically, the idea is is that these things that we've called legacies will continually be explored over the course of the game. Mm -hmm. So instead, like you can't have the same focus twice, but because of legacies, you can keep adding to a certain idea. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I kind of think so. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I kind of want to think about what this, what caused the whole worldwide worldwide energy crisis. Like, okay. if there was a certain event or something that happened that caused that, like, not really just using some sort of vehicles or something. Uh, or electricity, uh, but something really bad happened. Yep. Well, we'll explore that over the course of the round. Okay. So you're picking the worldwide energy crisis? Yes. Okay. No problem. Oh. There we go. God, this noise is making me crazy. Now that I'm aware of it, it's just the worst. The stream is purring. Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it means that it's pleased. It's pleased with us. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what it is. It's because I'm using the shitty webcam mic uh, on yours. On stream, you can't hear it because I'm using the actual mic. Yeah, it's kind of weird because yeah, like your your webcam on stream actually looks better, and I wondered about that earlier. It's because I'm using different webcams. You crazy person! It's the only way to do it though, because uh, OBS and Google Hangouts actually uh, can't can't use the same hardware at the same time. 
Ooh, okay. Yeah, so I, I literally can't do it any other way. <laughs> hmm. That's genius. <laughs> so obvious now. So yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, Sam's going to keep working on the legacy, I guess. What? Well, I just, I just topped it up. I mean, it's there. Oh, is it? <laughs> I put the, the legacy yeah. on the left and the event in oh, the sequence. Gotcha. Yeah, I can see it. It's great. Excellent. Okay, uh, so, Johnny, go ahead. You're the lens. You can make either one thing or two things, uh, as long as they're nested. In terms of that cause? That of the worldwide energy crisis. It doesn't have to be the cause, but it does have to be related. Okay. So, no nuclear stuff. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> what could possibly have happened? No nuclear stuff wasn't actually selected, by the way. So that that's, you don't have to worry about that. Hmm. I would kind of just like to ask this question and let you guys figure it out. Sure. So make uh, make an event and a scene, and we'll explore the scene. The scene. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I guess there would be some kind of place that or somehow uh, a certain company or something that is responsible for all of the energy and there's a headquarters and people are starting to see that something is going wrong okay maybe so there uh so what's the event you're creating uh There's a, the, the leading energy company whose name is what? It, it can be hokey, just, just name. Spectrum. Spectrum's good. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> it's just. No, no, like legit. It's perfect. Uh, it's just the name that I see on this spray paint. <laughs> all good. Spectrum, spectrum is perfect for energy. Um, so, spectrum is collapsing. Spectrum is the first to notice what's going on. Like, how how are they affected by, or how are they affecting the energy crisis? Well, I think at that point they're just trying to figure out what is causing the energy or the okay what is the cause of the energy crisis that is about to happen in the future. So we're gonna say uh, the event is light or dark. 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 Okay. Very 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 dark. Okay, so move this guy down. Put in this event. So, Spectrum uh, investigates the cause of the energy crisis. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, obviously, they don't know there will be an energy crisis happening. Uh, so the warning signs, then we'll say? Yeah. Kind of. Cool. Don't you want that bottom one to be in a, or a scene? Uh, I thought we were going to make a scene out of this, but it could or be... There... Well, because you got two events there. 
Right. But you can't just make a scene out of a period, right? Right. But it should be a scene and an event. Yeah. So I'm going to make it a scene now. Uh, light or dark, Johnny? The scene? Yeah. Dark. Dark. All right. Paste. Dark. So what happens in the scene? Uh, what's the question you want to ask? Well, didn't you already ask the question? What are the effects of the energy crisis? Was it the effects or cause? Oh, okay. Well, fair. <laughs> uh, yeah, what is the cause of the energy crisis? Okay. What could possibly have happened that this worldwide energy crisis is happening? All right. Yeah. So what is the that cause of the energy crisis? Um, so I played it a little weird the first time when we were doing scenes. Uh, are there any characters who have to be in this scene? You don't have to name, you, you may specify, I'm just asking in case you had someone in mind. Uh, if you don't, then we're gonna make up characters. Probably maybe the uh, I'm missing the word. Um, like the boss of the headquarters, I guess, maybe. The CEO? Sure. What's his name? Mr. Spectre. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sounds good. Spectre of Spectre. I don't know. I'm in. Let's do it. I love it. It sounds mysterious. Mr. Spectre. Mr. Spectre. <laughs> it's like the perfect name for a shady CEO. Okay. Uh, so who are you going to play, Sam? Um... I want to be the the like alderman or mayor or something of the town downstream from the dam. Okay. So, uh, what's your name and uh, what town are you from? I am from uh, Evio, the town of Evio, because <laughs> yeah, there may be someone in chat by that name, and uh, I am. Um, I am Alderman uh, Alderman White. Okay. <laughs> so Alderman White, Mayor of Yvio. <laughs> also pronounced Yveo. Yeah, Yveo. How dare you question my pronunciation of my own hometown? <laughs> All right, Val. Who, who are you gonna play? Um, how about I am. An independent investigator hired by the mayor to investigate this problem. Okay. Okay. What's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Jerry. Uh... <laughs> I don't know why Jerry is so funny, but it is. <laughs> it's it's going to be Jerry Charles. I have two first names. All right, done. Wow, you must be important. <laughs> yeah, people get very confused. I get get I I get called Charles Jerry a lot. So, yeah, and and you're correct. It is Jerry with a G, actually. Thank you oh, for spelling yes. it correctly. Oh wow, that, that doesn't happen often. I always spell Jerry with a G. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I actually do. <laughs> nice, nice. I would have totally done a J. But... I spell most I spell most J names with Gs. What like... if it's short for Jerome though? Well, that's fair. Mm. You can spell Jerome with a G. I guess you could. It's just not done much. No. 
Quick, let's all call Jerry Seinfeld and see what he thinks. <laughs> hey Jerry, yeah. Well, let me let me just let me just open up my phone here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I am going to play. Um, I'm going to play Autobahn. I hate you. <laughs> so you're going to play the highway. All right. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Uh, and uh, he is a whistleblower within the organization. Ooh. Okay. Could it be auto brawn so that you have another color? <laughs> what? Why? Why is it with the German today? <laughs> it just came to. It's the first thing that came to my head. And Sam always talks about Top Gear, so it's his fault. Auto The German show. What? It's you still talk about <laughs> Top Gear? Auto brawn. Auto, there's many famous Autobahn racetracks, so uh -huh. I, think that, I think that logic is sound. <laughs> yeah, all right. It's your birthday. We can let you get away with that. Yeah, actually, your birthday is here in Germany. Okay. Yeah. Oh. There we go. True. That's Happy birthday from Germany. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday. Anyway. Hey, don't sing that. We're going to get fined. That's, oh, that's true. Wait. Actually, I think it just was put in the public domain, wasn't it? Uh, uh, level, I think there's a. I think it's a legal gray area at the moment. Hold on, I'm googling this. And that was in the states. Not all of us are in the states. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> right. Just, just you, Val. You just you. Just me. Just me. Damn Yankees. Well, hey, Val's actually. I'm Canadian. not actually a Yankee. But, yeah, so I get the best of both worlds. But she lives in, in New York. Yeah, it's it's in the public domain since February 10th. Oh, there you go. Or they, they started kind of like processing it so it's in the public domain. So, Weird. Yeah. Okay. So uh, do you want to <laughs> set the stage, Drani? Sorry, I was just confused because... Sam and uh, not Q Sam, the other. The others. No, the There's too many Sams. Sams. Just announced that Derek has started streaming. Okay. Too many Sams. All those other unimportant Sams. Sure. <laughs> sure, buddy. So. Sure. Wait. That sounded reassuring. So I, I I have to what? I have to start the scene or what? Uh, set the stage. Uh, what do we know? Where's the t scene taking place? What's going on? Just give us a any details. We don't need all of them. Just, you know, something to get us started. I kind of just imagine this like a movie scene, like just sure. people, like a lot of people with a lot of screens and, and people are kind of panicking and <laughs> running around. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. So where are you? Are you in your office? Yeah, before the scene starts and then Okay. Maybe maybe someone is uh someone is coming in and Okay. Kinda says that um that something weird is happening and I'm I'm going to this this headquarters screen room. <laughs> Okay, like the stock exchange? <laughs> Is that what you're going for? Oh, well, I think we just got raided and then Nightbot completely owned it. Oh, yeah? What? Stevie Ray Drawn tried to raid. I appreciate that, Stevie. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Stevie. Oh, God. I I, tr I, tr I tried to fix that. I actually made it higher than it was last time. <laughs> My bad. Wait, uh, what did I say? Small raid. Yeah. <laughs> Things are happening. Things are happening. <laughs> My bad. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. My settings must be really, really hardcore, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so, so.
So you, so, what's happening in the scene, Ronnie? Tell me. I guess I guess that um, the start of the scene will be that people are noticing on the screens first that um, that there are a lot of warnings that there's uh, something something not right, like just like lights beeping and. I don't know. I uh, since I'm Mr. Spe Mr. Specter, <laughs> yeah. uh, I what the hell is the whistleblower supposed to do? <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, in this context, uh, I want I told the CEO, but he didn't listen. Uh, so I'm now going to start spreading information to the outside world. Wow. Okay, so um, I think I'm gonna uh, call Mr. Mr. White. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Okay, so my phone rings and I pick it up. Hello, Mayor or Alderman White. Good day. It's Mr. Specter. I think uh, we have a problem, and it it seems to be spreading around Ivea. What is the problem? Uh, I think that our systems tell us that um, that some systems are failing and energy is running low. Wait, so you're telling me the the town isn't going to have enough power to operate? I think that's exactly what I'm telling you. How can that be? You already you've already choked the river off almost completely. There's barely any water even running through and you can't generate enough power? I I don't know what's happening. I I think I will call you back. I I have to uh, hire a a an investigator to to see what ha what's happening. Sure, it's probably gonna be some guy called Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I will call you back. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, so next, I'm gonna call <laughs> Jerry Charles. So my phone rings. I pick up, hello, this is uh, Jerry Charles of Charles Investigations. How can I help you today? Good day, my name is Mr. Spectre. I'm the CEO of Spectrum. And holy I think... moly, you're the CEO of Spectrum calling me? Wow. How you, wow, all right. How yeah. you doing? Yeah, my, my cousin told me about you. Oh, uh, your cousin, that's great. I love it. So what, what can I do for you, sir? I think uh, we might have a problem, and it's it's supposed to be, like, uh, you can't tell anyone about it. It's it, it oh, has of course. to be a secret. Jerry Charles is known for his secrecy. I promise you, this stays between us. <laughs> okay. You have the the Jerry Charles guarantee on that. I I want to I want you to investigate on something. Uh, we we uh, discovered that in Ivale there are some energy problems, and uh, we don't know what is causing it. But some systems seem to be failing, and I'm quite worried about that. Okay. Wow. That's that's quite a big thing that you're asking there. But I can I can get my team on it. But I'm, I'm sure you want this to be on the the hush hush down low, right? Yes. Like, d d d okay. So we're gonna we're gonna try to keep this very quiet. Um, I'm going to need access to your to your staff and to your computer systems. Um, mm -hmm. But I can come into your office this afternoon and we can get started on this. Okay, I think that sounds good. All right, awesome. We'll discuss a rate too when I come in. Yes. Okay, like Alright, thanks. Charles out. <laughs> Charles out. <laughs> nice. He doesn't say Jerry Charles does not say goodbye. 
<laughs> All right. So, uh, what happens next, Ronnie? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I think we skip forward to the afternoon and, or even further, maybe I, I sent Mr. Jerry uh, to, to investigate the problem. All right. But on the way, Otto Brand kind of seems to be sniffing something. <laughs> Sure, sure. So it's kind of a scene between Jerry and Otto. All right, I'm in. All right, sweet. So, can so we I, say like, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm like leafing through my file folders, like looking for stuff. When you walk in. Okay. Oh, hey. Uh, what you up to there? Uh, I was, I was, Mr. Uh, Spectre gave me access to those files for my, uh, my investigation. Jerry Charles. Hello. Uh, what? Who? What? Um. Uh, the, b- the I, boss of your company? Um, I'm not doing anything. No. What? It looks like you were doing something. No, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything. Shuts the I, I, I come and sit down next to you and put a hand on your shoulder to stop you from going anywhere. And I'm like, No. You can tell me. I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm an investigator, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. And no one will will give me anything. No one's telling me anything. And you know, I'm just trying to do this for the good of the people. Uh, so, who, who did you say hired you again? Uh, the the people hired me. Uh, uh, the, the I am I am what? the people's investigator. Uh, oh, okay. Um, listen, okay. Let me tell you something. Mr. Spector hired me, but I think there's something shady going on in this organization. And if you think there's something shady going on here, I want to know about it. Well, there's definitely something going on. I mean, those new testing facilities they installed in the Valley last week, uh, there's been some strange readings. I mean, I I brought them to to Mr. Spector earlier on, but he, um, well, he kicked me out. (laughs) Did he? Well, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't I know. Huh. I mean, I mean, there wasn't anything like super weird, I guess, but it was strange. Like, what, what, what was strange about the readings? Well, so our company generally monitors uh, tectonic movements uh, in order to better predict weather patterns and, and and things that might, you know, affect our bottom, like affect affect our service. Uh, mm-hmm. And I've been noticing with these new uh, these new installations that there's a lot of strange things going on. Strange things. Uh, just really? weird readings. Uh, I'm not quite sure why yet. Would you be willing to share the results of those readings with me? I promise you your name will have no bearing on this at all. It will appear uh, nowhere. Sure, no problem. I always keep my sources anonymous. That's the, the Jerry Charles promise. So, uh, here's the readings. Okay. Whoa! Uh, so looking- you'll see here that this is actually taking place over the course of about an hour. Uh, Holy moly. Yeah, I mean, that's looking like earthquake level, but it's not an actual earthquake. Uh, huh. So... So I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm just a lab tech, you know, like I just, I just look at the data. I, I don't do look at other things. Right. Well, let me, let me take this into consideration and bring this to my sources. And then All right. you might, we might have to, I mean, if, Mr. Specter isn't willing to to do anything about this. Hmm. hmm. Anyways, I'll take this into consideration. Okay. Sounds right. so, sounds good. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Brown. Thanks for listening. I think. You're welcome. Charles out. <laughs> <laughs> I walk out. Okay. <laughs> All right. There we go. 
Uh, so we haven't answered the question yet. Oh, okay. shit. <laughs> Excuse me, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. It's a family-friendly stream. Oh, shit. No! <laughs> I'm sorry, all the children that are listening. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to use a mechanic called push here. Uh, and it's going to be really funny because I'm going to push what I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm gonna push that uh, that uh, Auto Auto Braun knows exactly why uh, the tectonic plates are shifting. It has to do with the blasting, and what they're doing is they're actually dis is disrupting uh, coal and water lines. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, water being flowed, being drawn back underground. Uh, filling cavities. Uh, so yeah. Thanks, Mr. Spectre. Thanks, Mr. Spectre. Uh, so yeah, that's my proposal. Any additional proposals? You can now suggest your own ending. If I you... think that sounds great to me. Okay, so vote all four. So, so hold on, how does that? How does the shifting tectonic plates cause there to be an energy crisis? Uh, because it's, um, it's rapidly destroying all the natural deposits of other sources of energy. So, okay, so just... So oil, yeah. oil pump lines are getting crushed and, and destroyed, uh, mines are being wrecked, like... So, so, it's, so, so it's, it's creating, like, a fuel shortage? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, all right. That in there okay so we all vote yay 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 okay five five fingers for that i think that's how you're supposed to vote yes so cool uh we answered the question uh yeah so next uh yeah so you did two there johnny so next is sam's turn yes i finished <laughs> frantically trying to make that into a text box and it's not working. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay. So, what's our f our focus is still the energy crisis? Yep. Keeping in mind, you do not have to put that in the period of energy crisis. You can put it wherever you want, as long as it's related. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess I think I should create an event, another energy crisis event. Okay. Or no, you know what? Uh, how about I make a scene under the people harness the power of waterfalls okay uh and it can be uh say a scene where you know it's it's a scene at the completion of a huge dam like a hoover dam equivalent okay um and so it'll be a light tone scene uh because it's this thing's finally been completed and they're about to switch it on and it's going to power, you know, the entire Eastern seaboard or, or whatever in this world, okay. in this country. So I guess my question is for the scene is, um, what, what problems does this, uh, renewal of, of power resolve? Like what, how does this make things better? Okay. All right. So, uh, do you have any characters that must appear in the scene? I think, um, I think, I think Mr. Spectre should definitely be there. Okay. <laughs> no way this dude does not have, yeah, it does not have some sort of interest in this. Fair, fair enough. For the record, uh, Johnny, you do not have to play Mr. Spectre this time if you don't want to. Okay. 
Uh, he's now a global character. Like he's he's part of the timeline. Anyone can play him at any time, uh, and use him as they will. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. That's the only person who definitely has to be there. Okay. So, uh, who are you going to play, Sam? Are you going to play Spectre, or are you going to play someone else? I will play the uh, engineer in charge of the um, charge of the dam, like the chief engineer, Engineer O'Brien. All right. <laughs> Dr. O'Brien it is. It's an entirely original name created by me, <laughs> Okay. Who are you playing, Val? Um, I guess I can be Mr. Spectre. Okay, cool. Sounds Unless good. someone else was really tied to being Doctor Mr. Spectre. Doctor. <laughs> Suddenly he's a... Uh... He didn't go to school <laughs> for eight years to be called Mr. Spectre. <laughs> there we go. Between the time of, you know, the breakdown and the resolution, he, he got this doctorate. It's a PhD yeah. in power management? <laughs> Uh, yes. There we oh, go. Okay. It's an energy crisis is the best time to do that, right? Sounds good. Uh, I am going to play the son of Alderman White, whose name is Jerry White after his cousin. Aw, <laughs> oh, Jerry. Who is a reporter. Who do you want to play, Drani? Or do you want to just play, like, uh, all the random villagers, people? Kind you play whatever you want. That's kind of what I've been thinking about, actually. Well, what the hell are you doing? Sorry, I was closing my door. Don't mind me. I just realized I left it open. Um, Carry on. I kind of want to be a bunch of people who are totally against this because there might be people who want to uh, create more waterfalls and uh, villagers uh, villages are gonna get blown away and people have to move and stuff. Okay. So oh, you're all the villagers from the catch basin. I'm the angry villagers. <laughs> Torches and yelling, it's going to be great. Pitch for it. <laughs> All right. The anti dams, I love it. This is my, my fork. <laughs> All right, so uh, go ahead, Sam. Set the stage. Uh, well, okay, so uh, all of the important people from nearby, uh, political and economic and all that, are gathered on the top of the dam. Um, the most important people are, are at a... A big ribbon that goes around one of the the turbine towers that's like just beside the dam, uh, and they're about to, you know, break a bottle of champagne over over it to initiate to whatever to you know yeah. make it official. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. So, so yeah, so I think O'Brien says, well. Um, I'm glad everyone has joined us here today uh, for this momentous occasion. We'll finally be able to provide power for our people uh, to improve our quality of life, uh, to to alleviate, uh, alleviate our reliance on on coal, and you know, uh, just generally make the life of our people better. And he swings the bottle of champagne at the at the thing. Mr. O'Brien, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, can you comment? On... Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Uh, can you comment on the, uh, all of the, the people of Yaveo who were, uh, died in the energy crisis because we didn't have this dam? Uh, O'Brien completely misses the turbine with the bottle and spins all the way around, narrowly missing your face, uh, with the bottle. And just barely gets himself into control and says, "Well, uh, I know there's been a lot of 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 crisis or of um, 
austerity measures that we've had to put in place because of the crisis, but this dam is a direct response to that. We are trying to solve that problem. Can you uh, confirm yeah. or deny whether or not Spectre, Spectrum had Alderman White assassinated? Uh, look, Spectrum is a major uh, funding source for this project, and I, I can't possibly confirm or deny any rumors, political or otherwise. I mean, we're here to celebrate. Why are you trying to bring us down? I just want to find out the truth. The truth is this. This dam is great. <laughs> it's a so, damn so great you're dam. denying the assassinations <laughs> of, of political figures in order to make, push this dam through? Uh, I maintain turbines. I don't know why you're asking me about a political assassination. Well, you're the chief engineer, aren't you? Or are you not the chief engineer? Did you assassinate the chief engineer? I did, as is our tradition, <laughs> that you keep what you kill. I did assassinate the previous engineer. So I'm not really sure why you're even asking me this. <laughs> the previous engineer, Riddick, had got to go. <laughs> engineer Riddick was well loved by the people. <laughs> I feel like these questions should be directed towards the mayor or, uh, or, you know, someone in political power. I'm a servant of the people. Well, you know that the mayor is just a puppet for Spectre now, right? Uh, I, 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 I'm not sure that that's true. I know that they provide a lot of campaign funding as they do, uh, to our organization, the EVO power, uh, ordinance and but you know I, I can't confirm or deny any of your accusations where is specter shouldn't he be here for the opening of the dam he is here he's just over there and I oh just... hello yeah i'm i'm there i'm waving to some like folks in the crowd you know i'm doing my whole ceo look at me kind of thing I, I... um i've got the the giant scissors to cut the ribbon <laughs> I, I i run up and like throw a punch you killed my father! <laughs> oh, what are you doing? Guards, get him! I trip oh and God. fall over the bri over the edge of the dam, <laughs> plummeting to my death. <laughs> well, this did not go as expected. This was supposed to be a light scene. <laughs> it's not done yet! <laughs> okay, alright. <laughs> Three days later, he comes out of the river and he's fine. There you go. No, I, I, I turn to the crowd. And I make a speech. I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, this is what disagreeing and, you know, anger will get us. We will fall down the dam of our own anger if we keep going this way. Now, this dam here is here to solve all our problems. And yes, sacrifices had to be made. And yes, we lost things during this great energy crisis. But this... This will, this is a, a step forward. We now have found a renewable resource that we'll be able to use to make our future better. So let us not fall down the dam of our own destruction. Let us move forward and climb out of the river. Nonsense! And, keep going. and most importantly, remember that this new dam will be able to power uh, numerous mills. So we'll be able to uh, create more flour and make more bread and feed our people properly uh, so we can avoid the, the privations of our recent past. Hear, hear. That was a pretty good speech. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I think that answers the questions. Uh, yeah, and the reporter incidentally died and no one seemed to care. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know. <laughs> Wait, what, what, what's his name? R Riddick or something? No, that that should not be canon. <laughs> too late. Way too late for that. <laughs> oh, god damn it. What have I done? Man, poor Jerry. Yeah, Jerry, I mean, really a victim of his own success. <laughs> really. A victim of his own clumsiness, I would say. All right. Uh, so it's your turn, Val. Oh, lordy. Okay. So, our focus is the worldwide energy crisis. 
So we figured out the beginning of the crisis and the end of the crisis. Yep. Um, and, hmm. and like I reminded Let's Sam, see. you don't actually have to add something to this specific period. You can add it wherever you want on the timeline as long as it relates back to the energy crisis. You got it, got it. I got it, got it. Hold um, on, I'll be right back. Um, all right. Hmm. See, I'm intrigued by Ostland creating their own space program. Right. Um, is not Germany the, the name of the country that we're primarily in right now? <laughs> yeah. Not Germany. On Germany? Not Germany. Okay, not Germany. Not Germany. Got it. It's canon. It's, okay. in, it's in the scene. It's in the <laughs> event. It. It's not written Germany. in the event. It's um... not Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if this would relate to the energy crisis, but I would like to know how Ostland is creating their own space program. Um... Okay. Like, I don't know if they have access to the space trains. Okay. Or if they're on the same space train trail. Or if they're vehicles. Okay. So um, how, how does that relate to the energy crisis? Good lord. I don't know. This is very energy focused, which is not my strong suit. I'm not very scientific. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, th um, but like, like, think about like uh, the example that they give in the book is that uh, they talk about things like archaeologists many years in the future finding finding things relating to an event or uh, you know in the past maybe there's something that started uh, somewhere in one of the other ages that started or pushed towards an energy crisis or right yeah yeah oh man This is work. <laughs> this is real work. Man. Okay, so. We also got our the start of our timeline that we haven't really played around with much. Yep. Um, dude, I'm like drawing a blank here. You could pretty, pretty much uh, play this forever. Yeah, uh, you can, which is why we're going to have a hard limit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they yeah. talk a lot about it in the book about like uh, multiple play sessions and like certain things, and it gets kind of crazy. <laughs> but yeah, it's certainly an interesting exploration. Um, do you want to pass then, Val? And I'll put something in I and then you can come back. I would love to pass. I would love to pass. Okay. <laughs> That'd be great. So, um, I'm totally going to steal your thunder. Go for it. Because I have... It's your birthday. You can steal all the thunder you want. Because I have an idea. Uh, so, I'm going to make a scene and I'm going to try and make it a, as quick a scene as possible. Because we only have 25 minutes left. Uh, but I'm going to make a scene under Ausland creates their own space program. And I'm going to say, uh, that, uh, how did Ausland, uh, how do you spell Ausland? <laughs> OST. Yeah, I got it. Uh, how did, how did Ausland steal everyone's energy during the energy crisis? in order to start their program. Oh, that's easy. Time of use rates. That's theft right there. I think that was a joke. I didn't get it. Nobody else here knows Ontario power politics, apparently. Yep. Mm, that would be a no. <laughs> I, I'm the only other person who lives in Ontario, bro. <laughs> Val, when Val I'm not even from Ontario. So I... Yeah. I really wouldn't care. <laughs> Neither do people care. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 the wrong audience for this. <laughs> for Ontario power jokes. 
Okay. Uh, so uh, we're gonna we have twenty five minutes left, so we're gonna try and keep this as short as possible. Uh, but feel free to explore. Feel free to explore. But I think people that need to be in this scene are uh, Major General von Metternich. Uh, needs to be in this scene. And I think uh, there's going to be a uh, competing general named uh, Steve. <laughs> that sounds so important. General Steve. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good old General Steve. Uh, yeah, so another... Another, uh, another two first name person. Was this, like, Frank Steve? Uh, Frank Steve. Maybe. This is Roger Steve. God, that's worse. Oh, Roger <laughs> Steve. All right. <laughs> Bam. When this guy's on the radio, it must just be so confusing. Maybe. Roger, Roger Steve. <laughs> Well, you know, that's why he's a general. They promoted him up so they didn't have to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> he's as bad as Major Major. <laughs> Stevie says Roger Stevie. So done. Roger Stevie. Roger Stevie. Roger, Roger Stevie. Perfect. Uh, now, are we all acknowledging what you just said, or are we saying the name? <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, uh... Roger Stevie is a Oslin general, uh, and Major uh, General von Metternich's there, and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna play Major General von Metternich. Who do you want to play about, uh, Johnny? Mm. <laughs> the Great Dilemma. <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> senior, senior, senior. Yeah, I, he's he's the father of senior, senior, junior. Oh, of course. Yeah, he's a villain Obviously. from Kim Possible. <laughs> oh, <It's> the worst. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, who do you want to play, Johnny? I think I'm the very nervous intern. Okay. Uh, of uh, Mr. Metternich's, um, I guess, or assistant intern, something. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> it's my first day. What's your name? Lieutenant Einward. <laughs> totally not your name backwards. I'm just Andy. I don't know. Andy? Done. Andy the intern. <laughs> Andy okay. the intern. I love it. Excellent. <laughs> who, uh, who are you going to play, Sam? Uh, I am the assistant to um, Roger. Uh, what, what was his rank? Roger Steve? <laughs> He's a general. Okay, I'm gonna. I am uh, the aide de camp to uh, Major General Steve or Stevie. Uh, I am uh, Major Tom. <laughs> Major Tom. Okay. And I guess that would leave me as a, as, uh, as Major Stevie. Major yes, General you Stevie. are. You are Major Stevie. Major Steve. Major General Stevie. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yes. Yeah. Get my title right, Major General Stevie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we are in uh, Major General Stevie's office on the Auckland uh, DARPA base. <laughs> oh Auckland DARPA base. And uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, I, walk, I walk in the door. Uh, thank, thanks for meeting me, uh, Gen Major General Stevie. It's it's good to meet you. 
Pleasure to meet you, uh, General von Metternich. I shake his hand. Please, have a seat. Uh, so, uh, I came here today to uh, discuss with you a business proposition. You see, the uh, there's this guy named Zeitgeist. And he's kind of a loon. Uh, ah. So I was wondering if you could uh, kind of stop him. And how how would you want me to do that? Well, you see that he's kind of developing this space program. And I couldn't sneak the blueprints out, but I was really hoping that your side would, would have uh, a lead on it that maybe I could help... Uh, help with, uh, as it were. Hmm. Huh. Well, I think, uh, I think, uh, let me call in Major Tom here. I believe that he's been dealing with this case. Okay. Sorry, yes. Sorry, what was, uh, what are you talking about? I was taking notes. Oh, excellent. Good. You're here. I think, I, I think ground control you. was calling you. Ground control to Major Tom? Yes, exactly, yeah. Major Tom. Ground uh, control. Being me. <laughs> Coming loud and clear. Hey, excellent. Um, wow. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, like, losing track here. What's going on? It's okay. Um, yeah, sorry. We were talking about the energy crisis, I think? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I didn't have breakfast this morning. I'm a little spacey. My apologies. Fair enough. Um, oh, yes. We are talking about the... I don't know if we were talking about the, yes, the energy crisis. Um, zeitgeist. Zeitgeist, yes. Yes, Zeitgeist. My normal, my, my nemesis, Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist right. has been conducting all sorts of uh, strange research, sir. Uh, he is looking into a number of different ancient artifacts, uh, which he proposes were constructed by ancient aliens. <laughs> Ancient aliens. Psh. Yeah, the guy's a loon. Aliens don't exist. All right. And what do you want me to do about this? So uh, let's just say that uh, Zeitgeist, um, you know, we're, we're, we're just discussing possibilities here. But uh, Zeitgeist may be using a uh, newly discovered energy source in order to uh, develop magic uh, uh point of order there's no such thing as magic well you know yeah, magnets magnet. right uh oh, oh it's true oh mag magnets does sound a lot like magic you know sometimes yeah. the two can be confused it, our people have long thought magnets were magical it, exactly indeed. we live in an age of enlightenment now yeah. we do indeed thank you major tom so uh, um so what we're going for is I don't have access to that energy source, but I may have access to a stockpile that we made uh, about 40 years ago, if you remember what was going on back then. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. That no one really knows about. Uh, so I could, I could help uh, possibly, you know, just speaking figuratively here, I could, I could help with uh, a, a new source of energy for you uh, to get your program off the ground. All right. I would greatly appreciate your help, but I assume that this help won't come without a price. I assume you, you're looking for something in return. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, A, I want you to deal with Zeitgeist. B, I need you to keep my name off the books and out of this. Because we, we are not discussing treason here. Um, and C, uh, I need a vacation getaway home uh, in the mountains. Ah, yes, in Ostland's famous mountains. Right. Uh, the... Those ones. Sorry? Those ones, yes. Yes, those ones. Yes. yes. Definitely not Alps. <laughs> no, not the, the Malps. <laughs> the mouths are very beautiful at all times of the year yes uh, my health is failing a little and I, I need some uh, 
some fresh air, as it were. Um, also, that zeitgeist is driving my stress, stress levels mad. Mm-hmm. Mm, I can imagine that. Mad scientists tend to do that. Right. So uh, I'm going to call in my intern, and uh, he, he's going he's gonna to bring in uh, a sample for you. Excellent. Uh, so, Andy, Andy, get in here. <laughs> yes, what is it? What is it? Uh, do you got the sample? Uh, I think I forgot it. Wait, you, let me go back. Wait, wait, you forgot the sample? I'm sorry, it's, it's just my first day. Please don't fire me. Oh, I won't fire you. Go get the sample. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to shoot him later. Yes. No. That's probably a good plan. He yeah. seems a little twitchy. Yeah, a little odd. Uh, so yeah, we have a deal. Uh, I would like to see the sample first, but tentatively, we have a deal. I All can right. make this zeitgeist disappear. We can easily get you a cabin in the Malps. And uh, I will, of course, keep your name off the books. That is very easy to do. Excellent. We'll just, I, I keep my sources secret, sir. Excellent. I'm back, I'm back. Here's the sample. Ah, yes. Pull out my pistol, shoot Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I recoil and dive behind the table. Why is that guy so twitchy? <laughs> I've got my sidearm up and I'm just like, just my eyes over the edge of the table. It's it's okay, Major Tom. Major Tom's had some, some previous trauma. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. It's a little jumpy, but can you please put that pistol away in my office? Yeah, yeah, you you got it. You got it. I don't I don't appreciate the use of firearms within my my office space. You know it it, it ruins the zen. Sir, of course, sir. Gotcha. Fair enough. Fair enough. Had to be done. All right. Yes. Uh, Major Tom, can you please get uh, the the janitorial to come clean up this? intern situation please <laughs> uh, I, I rush over to the, the wall in uh, intercom panel uh, and just call for uh, a red cleanup because there's a code for this <laughs> nice of course there is. okay so we answered the question yes yes we did, yes, we did. There's, a, there's a sheet ghost on stream <laughs> getting real spooky in here spooky Whoa. Uh, Metternich sold them to the Australandians Oh, snap. Yes, and they're Australandians, not Australanders. Got it. Got Australandians. Australandians, yes. So, so Metternich's a traitor, is what you're saying. He sold off the reserves for his own personal benefit. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, because he hated Zeitgeist so much. Poor yeah. guy. They yeah. totally wanted to see the mobs. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted to go on a Malpine vacation. Those Malps. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, Val, you uh, can take your turn. In Switzerland. Indeed. Uh, we got ten minutes. Uh... Wow, okay. So we're still in the energy crisis, right? Yeah. Okay. Energy crisis. my trick i'm just gonna sing a song long enough about the energy crisis and then time's gonna run out for my turn <laughs> Yay. energy crisis um i really don't know guys <laughs> okay uh do you have anything you want to do before we end ronnie you still have your last uh, your last lens turn. Uh. Hmm. I'm kind of still intrigued by the uh, people discover special abilities on other planets. Right. Thing. How does that uh, How does that relate to the energy crisis? I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just saying, how does it? Uh, 
kind of wondering what the abilities could be and how they would be useful for this crisis. So, okay. So maybe some ability could be that people just get super intelligent or uh, can run super fast or. Okay. I don't know. Just, just bolt like... the flash to a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> they did that in the Dark Knight Returns. Well, that jerk was asking for it. <laughs> yeah. Moving faster in light. What did he expect? Laws of physics aren't just suggestions, man. <laughs> they are They're laws for a reason. Yeah, um, can I make a suggestion? Is that cool? I know we're sure. not supposed I mean, to, we but we're not supposed we to, but I just, uh, in the effort of moving this along a little bit. Well, since this is the last one, we could just <laughs> work this out as whole thing since we are all just like getting a bit confused and stuck in this whole energy thing. Or I don't know. Well, I was just going to say, um, that uh, the special powers um, allows for new developments in uh, energy ma manipulation, thereby solving any past or future energy crisis. Maybe. I don't know. I was just thinking out loud. No, yes, maybe. Just just floating around here. I mean, it makes sense to me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yes, maybe so. I like it. Yeah, it's fine. How, what do you... Uh... Okay, I see what you're writing there. Yeah. Scrolling in. And future crisis. I fixed it. <laughs> Is that cool? Sound good? That's like that's like everything we're we're moving around the energy crisis stuff. <laughs> well, that's like that's how it's supposed to work, right? Like you're supposed to be able to talk about it in terms of the grand scheme, not necessarily just in a specific period or anything like that. They don't want to they don't want to limit you in that way. Yeah, it's kind of like there's recurring problems through history, cycling through, like, more than one power crisis. Yeah. I mean, like, kind of like real life. I mean, why did England started burning coal? Because they chopped down all the damn trees. Yeah, things happen. So, uh... Yeah. I get to set a legacy, but I think we're going to skip that for now, because we got five minutes. That's so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, start closing out a little bit here. Um, so we just played Microscope. Uh, give it a test. I was really into this game because I love the idea of uh, narrative history uh, and constructing narratives. I mean, that's what we do on this writing show. Uh, and yeah, fun party time because it's my birthday. Um, did everyone enjoy it? <laughs> I liked it. Yeah. I liked it more than I thought I would. Yeah, it's it's a little weird to get used to. I think if we were all a little bit more experienced, it would go faster and we'd get into it more. Um, mm. I also think we picked hard things. Uh, things like energy <laughs> and, and all that get really difficult. Well, you, you know what I think the biggest problem was here? We went too small. This is I, too short a time I, I actually agree with you. I actually agree with you. I feel it, feel, it felt a lot more confined than it needed to. Um... But I guess that's part of it, right? It just so, sometimes you go, you get a small story, and sometimes you get like a millennia long epic. Oh yeah, totally. Um, yeah. That, I, th go ahead, Bill. I mean, when you. I, I guess. Was, the, oh, sorry. I <laughs> <laughs> um, started making scenes and stuff. It gets very specific. Yep. 
Yeah, I mean, that's part that's of the point. Is. I think kind of like the, the mental block that I had with it, because it, it was fun and it was interesting, but I I every time I've, I've role-played and done stuff, even with storytelling games, I've had some sort of parameter. Whereas this had, yeah, some kind of guidelines, but it felt like it was a very free form. So in a way, it was even more difficult to come up with stuff for me, because, mm -hmm. it, you know, I I don't know if that makes any sense. But it, it, it does. To I mean, having at least some boundaries to play around in. Because, because uh, from from what I saw, anyway, you did. You were kind of struggling in like the uh, in the creation stage, but once we put you in a scene, like you were you were gung ho, and kind of just went for it. Characters, yeah. characters are what I do. It is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was silly. Yeah, and see, I'm a premise guy, so like I see the bigger the big picture. Uh, mm. And characters are not nearly as important to me. <laughs> um, totally. Uh, so yeah, any any last thoughts? Charles really out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Charles out. <laughs> Charles out. All right. Stay on the line. I will talk to you guys during the outro uh, in a second. Um, but I'm gonna mute you for now. Uh, yeah. So. So last, just for the stream, guys, big thank you to my friends for coming and chilling, uh, playing games with me. Uh, that's uh, Drawny, MC Pack of Profits, and my good friend Val. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're, uh, I'm going to throw it over to uh, John Derek Murphy's birthday stream. I moved things around so that we could both do the same thing, because this is the only day we could both kind of do it. Um, so yeah, he's a good friend of mine. Come hang out. I'm going to be hanging out there after. Uh, other than that, I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, check out Microscope. It's really cool. Um, I'm going to potentially... Uh, I've been discussed with the guys uh, guys and gals after, but I'm going to save this and maybe use this for a future uh, writing project on Accidental Origin. Uh, other than that, uh, peace. Take care. Charles out. <laughs> uh... I'll see you all later. Bye.